Let's move on to question number seven. Now, first of all, we are going to look at Le Chatelier's principle, but I think I'm going to start with the second part where we look at the uh, equilibrium constant, the equilibrium constant. They say there, study the reversible reaction represented by the balanced equation below, and there is the equation. And they say initially X moles of X2 is mixed with 0.3 moles of CO2 in a sealed 10 cubic decimeter container, equilibrium is reached, and then there's 0.2 moles left of uh, water. And they give you the equilibrium constant, and you have to calculate what is X. Now, whenever you get a problem such as this, where the equilibrium constant is involved, and they don't give you anything at equilibrium, then the best thing to do is to um, draw up a table. Now, all right, there we've got the whole table. You see, what you do is you've got the equation there, and you draw then columns for each one of those um, substances that are involved, and you draw four rows. And this will always be the same, the number of rows. So that is then the number of moles of each one of these at the start, the number of moles that have, you have used or produced, and then the number of moles at equilibrium, and then the concentration at equilibrium, and then you calculate your equilibrium constant. Okay, let's fill in what they've got there. They say you start off with X moles of H2 and 0.3 moles of that. And obviously, no product yet, nothing. And they say the volume is 10 cubic decimeters. And then they say that at the end, it's found that you've got 0.2 moles of H2 left. Now, the important thing when you use this is that I must now try, this is very much like a crossword puzzle, I must try and complete it, and then I can work out the equilibrium constant. The important thing is, in this second row, in this second row, if I can get one value in that second row, then I'm fine, then I can work it out, because one mole of that will react with one mole of that to produce one and one, so they must be in the ratio of one, 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 one. If that was, for instance, a four, then whatever comes in this row must be one to one to one to four. Okay, so I started off with naught. At equilibrium, I've got 0 0.2, which means that I have formed 0 0.2 moles of that. Now, remember what I said? One mole of that will react with one, one, one. So if I've got that is 0 0.2, then everything is going to be in the same ratio, 0 0.2. I started with X. I'm left with X minus 0 0.2. I started with 0 0.3. I used 0 0.2. I'm left with 0 0.1. I started with zero, I end up with 0 0.2. The concentration is the number of moles divided by the volume, the number of moles divided by the volume, the number of moles divided by the volume, the number of moles divided by the volume. And then in order to calculate the Kc value, Kc is the concentration of that product times the concentration of that product if it was a 4, then it would be to the power 4, but I mean they are all to the power 1, divided by the concentration of the hydrogen times the concentration of the CO2. And now you are just going to plug these values into there. The H2O, that one goes in there, that value goes in there, that value goes in there, and that value goes in there, and Kc is 4. Then you will have an equation with one unknown and you can solve for x. So that is then how you can use the table in order to calculate your equilibrium constant or if you've got the equilibrium constant, how you can calculate one of these unknowns. If we Now let's quickly look at question 7.1, Le Chatelier's principle. And this is now where they tell you that the industrial preparation of hydrogen gas is represented by the equation below, which is CH4H2O gives you CO plus 3H2. Now, what is very important here 
is that delta H is positive, which means that delta, um, the, it's an endothermic reaction. Heat is absorbed. Now, I prefer to write the energy that it absorbs or releases. In an exothermic reaction, heat is released together with the product it's formed. During an endothermic reaction, heat or energy is used as though it's one of the reactants. It's used together with that to produce that. Now it reaches equilibrium and you have to state Le Chatelier's principle. Now see that you know it. Le Chatelier's principle simply says this, that if you've got a system that is in equilibrium, it's very comfortable. If you do anything to disturb that equilibrium, the system will try to regain a new equilibrium by opposing what you've done. So in other words, if you've increased the temperature, the system will try to decrease the temperature. Now, how can the system decrease the temperature? Well, you increase the temperature by adding heat. The system will then decrease the temperature by using the heat. So in other words, the reaction using heat will be favored. The reaction using heat we call the endothermic reaction. So when you increase the temperature, system tries to decrease the temperature by using the heat. The endothermic reaction uses heat. So the endothermic reaction, which in this case is the forward reaction, will be favored. Right, if you would now change the concentration of anyone, then the system will react in such a way as to decrease that concentration. I want you to look at this. This is not very scientific, but it helps you a little bit to just maybe get a feeling of how you can figure out in what direction it will shift. If we look at this equation again, then it's very much like this. It's almost as if you, this is like a tube sort of filled with stuff, and you push on that side, then it's going to move in that direction. So if you would increase the concentration of the hydrogen, the equilibrium will shift to the left. If you increase the concentration of the CH4, you push on that side, then equilibrium will shift in this direction. If you will increase the heat, you add more heat, the equilibrium will shift in this direction. This is not very scientific, but at least it helps you to get a little feeling as to how it will, um, how the equilibrium will shift. Now, question number 712 says, how will an increase in pressure affect the yield of the hydrogen gas? Now, what is very important here to understand is that is a gas, that's gas, that's gas, and that is gas. Whenever you look at the effect of a gas, please don't look at solids and liquids, only at gases. What we notice is on the left-hand side, we've got a total of two gas molecules, one and one. On the right-hand side, I've got a total of four gas molecules. Now, we know that in gases, the gas exerts pressure because of the, the particles that are constantly moving around, they're jumping around, they never stop. They're always moving around in a box in the container. And then because of that motion, they collide with the sides of the container and that exerts pressure. Now, what happens here is if you would now imagine that you push in one wall of that box so that the volume is smaller and the temperature, therefore, the speed of the molecules are exactly the same, then you will find that the distance between the two sides of the container is much smaller, so there are going to be a lot more collisions. And that's why the, the pressure is definitely going to increase because there are more collisions. Now, what can the system do to decrease the pressure, to make it not so crowded? By trying to decrease the number of gas molecules. Now, if you look at this, two gas molecules produce four gas molecules. Four gas molecules produce two gas molecules. Ah, I've got a plan. If four molecules can now re react to form just two gas molecules, that's going to solve our problem. We are going to produce fewer gas molecules which will exert less pressure. And that's why the reverse reaction will be favored. You'll get more of this, less of that, and therefore the amount of hydrogen will be decreased. Um, the equilibrium will shift to the left. Now, unfortunately, this is how far we will get today. But until next time, God bless, good luck with the exams, and goodbye.